today I am going to take you guys through a little beginner yoga. Uh, all you really need is the space about the size of a beach towel. Uh, if you have a yoga mat, of course you can use a yoga mat. I'm going to use a yoga mat and I'm probably going to refer to our space here as the mat. Uh, but you don't need a mat. If you have hardwood floors or carpet or a rug, um, just somewhere nice where you can hopefully stand up tall with your arms above your head, nice and wide. We're not going to be running around or doing too much of anything, leaving our space so you don't need a whole ton of room. Uh, I'd encourage you to grab a glass of water. I know I definitely need one because I'm going to be talking the whole time, but it's nice to have that available to you. And we're not going to do anything too difficult today. But a lot of people like to have um, things for cushioning, uh, whether or not it's for your knees or your ankles or your wrists. Um, so if there's like a, maybe a blanket, I don't use it, but um, yoga blocks or a stack of books is nice as well. If you ever uh, can't touch the ground and you want to be able to touch the ground, you can place a block down or a book and it's really nice. But I am going to kick things off here from the seated position. Um, I'm not gonna play any music. So if you'd like to play some music, feel free to uh, put on your favorite Revier jam, uh, Loop Daddy 3 maybe, and just jam it out in the background while you're doing your thing. And hopefully you can still hear me during all of that. So if you are practicing with me today, now is the time to join me here seated on the mat. Uh, I know that sitting cross-legged sounds really simple, but the truth is, is it's actually not. Most of us haven't done it since we were little kids um, or don't do it very often since we were little kids. So um, sitting cross-legged might be a little bit more difficult than you remember it being. If you wanted to take a book or a pad or a pillow or something and put it underneath your butt, you're welcome to. Um, that can take some of the pressure off your hips and make things a little bit more comfortable while we're getting started. Yoga is not about poses or bending or movement. In its root, yoga is really about breath. Um, yoga is about looking inward and finding yourself. The modern understanding of yoga is really only the last 200 years. And before that, yoga was sitting in a cave and trying to find enlightenment. So I want to thank you for taking part of your Sunday morning and giving it to yourself. This is your time to do you. I have a camera on me, but you are just watching. Nobody is judging. Nobody is doing anything. So please allow yourself this time that we share on the mat um, to look inward and not worry about anything else outside your world. We're going to take a moment and worry about what's in here. Um, so now that we're seated, uh, I mentioned the breath work thing and that's kind of how we're gonna get started here. I want you to close your eyes and really let that transition from not doing yoga to doing yoga start by taking deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're gonna do a couple breaths here. On this next breath in, Let's slowly reach our arms out and wide and have them meet up above our head. And on the exhale, we're gonna bring our arms down slowly to our sides. We're gonna do this three more times and try to sync our movement with our breath. Breathing in on the way up and breathing out on the way down. On this last breath in, we're going to meet our hands above our head 
and slowly start to stretch and bend forward. When your hands meet the ground, you can use your fingertips to actually walk your arms a little bit further out. Since we're sitting here cross-legged, you should start to feel this. Uh, I feel it in my hips first, but I'm a runner. Other of you might be feeling it in your back or your lats or your shoulders. But try to lean forward and keep your butt down on the ground. I'd rather you keep your butt on the ground and not have your hands very far forward. And take one more breath here. Now let's move our left hand out to about 11 o'clock. And we're gonna walk our right hand over to stack it on top of our left hand. And we're gonna feel this stretch move down and focused on our right side. Don't forget about that breath. One more breath here as we walk our hands over to the other side. We're gonna move our left hand up to about one o'clock. Place our right hand above. If you're not feeling the stretch, you can walk it out a little bit further. We're gonna wake up that side body. Now we can bring our hands back towards the center. Come back up, seated, sitting upright. Think about your spine while we're sitting upright and your spine goes all the way up to the base of your skull. So try to think like there's a string tugging on the top of your head and pulling it up towards the ceiling and try to find as much length in your spine as you can. Now let's place our left hand down on the ground. Reach our right arm up above our head and find a side body stretch right here. When we're doing this side body stretch, it's really easy to hunch over and let our chest face down towards the ground. I'd like to encourage you to try to keep your heart pointed towards the wall in front of you. And if you can, you can start to move your vision up towards your hand up here, hanging in the air. One more breath here. On the next exhale, we can bring our right hand down to the ground and swing our left hand up into the air. Find that stretch again. Don't forget, don't let your chest dump down towards the ground. We're trying to keep our heart open and facing the wall in front of us. And if you can, you can bring your gaze from the wall in front of you up to the ceiling or to your hand. One more breath here. On the exhale, coming back down to our seated position. Now we're going to get a little twist in here. So take your right hand, place it on your left knee. Work your left hand out uh, as far behind you as you can comfortably. Don't force it. Some people are going to be over here on the side. Um, and some of us are going to be all the way back behind us. Don't forget about that length in your spine. Nice and tall. Don't force yourself on the twist, but you can allow yourself to start to twist a little bit. And you can use your hands behind you and on your knee to help you find it a little bit. If you're able to, try to bring your gaze to the wall behind you. But if you're not able to go that far, the side wall is great. One more breath in, and on the exhale, come back to center. Bring the left hand over to your right knee and the right hand behind you, and we're gonna check out this feeling on the other side here. Don't forget about that breath. When we're breathing in, we can think about what we're wanting to do. And then we exhale, we can sink a little bit deeper and act out that intention. One more breath here. And on the exhale, come back to center. Now we can rock forward, put our weight on our hands and work ourselves into a tabletop position. 
I'm going to turn over here to the side so you can see me a little bit better. Turn to a tabletop position, all fours, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this is a really great opportunity to find the movement that just feels good for you. I like to wiggle around back and forth, uh, loosen up my hips a little bit, and uh, this is your time. So just take a couple breaths here just to wiggle and stretch and find what your body is looking for and give it a little bit of that. All right, so now that we're done with our little wiggle, we can start to warm up our wrists. Um, wrists and ankles are things that a lot of us tend to take for granted. Um, so as we get really rolling into our yoga practice today, we're gonna make sure that we're warming up our wrists. So take your tabletop position. It's pretty natural for your middle fingers to be pointing forward ahead of you. So let's turn them outward and slowly rotate our hands. We can waddle back and forth to where our right hand middle finger is pointing out to the side wall and our left middle finger is pointing out towards this way. And you can wiggle back and forth and start to feel some of that wrist wakening. I like to do some circles, but if you do circles, make sure if you go one way, you go back the other way. And if this still feels good for you, you're welcome to continue to rotate your wrists outwardly, maybe even with your middle fingers pointing back towards your own knees. You can give that rotation, shift your weight around a little bit, make sure those wrists are nice and woken up. You can slowly take little steps and tick tock our hands back with our middle fingers pointing forward in front of us. Now we are going to do a stretch called cat-cow. Uh, it's called cat pose and cow pose, and we're gonna go back and forth. The idea of this is really kind of warming up and stretching our core in the front and our core on the back. So cow is where we get in this all four position. Cock your hips down. Point that butt up in the air, get a nice arch in the spine, and look up. As you get into this stretch, try to inhale. And on the exhale, we can switch to arching our spine like a cat and rock a little bit back and forth. Inhale back to cow. Exhale to cat. One more time, synced with our breath. Inhale to cow. Bring your eyes up in front of you. And then exhale to cat. And if you're able to, you can even bring your gaze up to your navel. Um, all right, so now we're gonna come back to tabletop. And we're gonna start to waken up our muscles a little bit more. Take your left heel, extend your leg out straight, and try to act like you're planting your heel on the back wall. Obviously, you don't have to place your heel on the wall there, but we're trying to find this nice parallel body position, and you can feel it start to activate in your hips and glutes. Now that we're here, we're on our shoelaces down here on our right foot, and our weight is on our left hand. So we can take our right hand up and reach forward. So my left heel is back and my right hand is forward. On the exhale, I'm gonna spring my knees down to reach my elbows. And inhale, go back to find that length. We're gonna do this two more times. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, find length. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, find length. 
exhale on diagonal to tabletop. Bring some balance to it, and we're gonna do the other side. So find your foundation here again. Extend that right leg back. Plant that heel against the wall. Once we're well established here, got the weight in our right hand, in our left knee. Weight in our right hand and our left knee. And we can reach left arm forward. Stay here for one breath. And on the next exhale, bring your knee down to your elbow, meet underneath you. Find length again on the next inhale. Two more times. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, find length. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, find length. Now let's come back down to tabletop. We warmed up the wrists already, so now it's time to think about the ankles. When I was first starting to do yoga, just sitting down, my shoelaces are down on the ground. I know you can't see the bottom, but my, they're like this. See if you can slowly shift your weight back on top of your heels and feel that body weight stretching those ankles out. Be careful and don't hurt yourself. Don't put too much weight on your ankles. Yeah, let me see here if I can. Is that better? Um, so, got the uh, ankles down on the ground. Try to bring the weight back onto the heels. You can use your hands to support yourself here so that you're not getting too much pressure on the ankles. Now that I've been spending some time, I can remove my hands. And I'm even gonna walk them back a little bit like this. And bring a little bit of this stretch up into my shoulders. And walk my feet forward. Uh, next, we're gonna do child's pose. So we're here in tabletop. And so for child's pose, we're gonna shift our knees out a little bit wider. Our knees were uh, underneath our shoulders, and now we're gonna want them uh, wider than our shoulders. I'm gonna show you like this. And then so for child's pose, we're gonna really open up this groin and hip, bring our hands forward, let our head relax down on the mat. And if you can, you can, depending on how your body feels, some people need to push themselves back like this. Here's the other angle. And we're just gonna take a moment here, two more breaths, just to relax and feel this child's pose. Remember, this is your body. I don't know what your body feels like. So sometimes child's pose feels good to me because I'm stretching my shoulders and upper body. Sometimes child's pose feels good because I'm stretching all this hips and I'm down nice and wide and I'm pushing back nice and deep. You know, just whatever your body is feeling, that's what I want you to take advantage of here in child's pose. Now, after child's pose, we're moving on into downward dog. Downward dog is where probably the most famous of the yoga poses. And downward dog is getting your weight back down on your toes here. And we are going to push our hips up into the air. So our first downward dog of the day. So our hamstrings are going to be real tight. I'm gonna shift my weight left and right, and this is called walking it out. Walk it out and let your body start to wake up. The goal of down dog is to 
have your weight evenly distributed on your hands, and then you're pushing your hips up into the air. Eventually, you start to bring your feet and your hands closer together, your heels start to touch the ground, and the focus starts being more about pushing your chest towards your thighs. But I don't need you to have a yoga journal down dog. You do what feels good to you. And that is usually pedaling it out right here. You should be starting to feel it in your shoulders. And that's exactly what this is intended for. If you ever need to take a breath, break, this is your yoga practice, so feel free to take a break. Uh, child's pose is a great place to take a break. Uh, or you're also welcome to do whatever. So we've got this down dog. We're stretching it out. Now we're going to see if we can rock into plank. Rocking our body weight forward. Putting our weight over on our hands like this. Really bring those shoulders into the action. And push back to down dog. One more. Inhale, rock forward to plank. Exhale, back to down dog. All right, that was a lot of work. Let's go back down to child's pose. Stretch those shoulders out. Ooh. Um, all right. If you need to reach your arms back behind, I like to do this bind sometimes. It's a little bit more advanced, but it feels good. So do whatever feels good. Now that we're in child's pose, we're gonna do a quick down dog and we're gonna move forward to a forward fold. Press your hips up to down dog, bend your knees, slowly walk your feet forward towards your hands. You might need to bend your knees a whole lot, or you can come up on your fingertips Maybe use a block. And now we're here. And on the inhale, sweep our arms out and wide, up to mountain pose. I'm gonna adjust this camera. I'm gonna be doing a little bit less work down on the ground. And we're gonna be up taller. Um, so you guys can see what's going on over here. So we're sweeping our arms up and wide, up here to mountain pose. If this is difficult for you, you're welcome to spread your legs a little bit, um, but I'm gonna keep my feet together and bend over to the side, find the side body stretch. Just when we were stretching our side body before, it's really easy to want to dump your chest down to the ground. I'm gonna encourage you to not do that. Try to look upwards, maybe take a sniff of your armpit, and keep your chest pointed towards the wall in front of you, not towards the ground. Inhale, back up tall. Exhale, over to the other side. Don't forget, don't dump to the ground. Try to keep your gaze up to the ceiling. And then back up tall for a mountain pose. Exhale, our arms down to our side. Now we're gonna get into a couple um, uh, more fancy yoga poses. Nothing too tricky, so bear with me. Uh, the goal for this next phase is I'm going to teach us a little bit of a flow. We're gonna go through a handful of poses that connect to each other. I'm gonna spend the first round being very careful of explaining all of these poses. But then after that, we're gonna go through two more rounds uh, and start to really feel the flow of the movement. So bring your feet shoulder width apart. On the inhale, arms wide and over your head. Exhale, forward fold. Just dangle here for a moment. If you need to bend your knees, you're welcome to bend your knees. Just let the top of your head dump all the worries of your life out onto the ground. If your hands are dangling and touching the ground, you can come up here and grab your elbows like this. 
help bring your body weight to help you with this stretch. <clears throat> I'm going to turn because it'll help with the explanation on the next one. Now that we've been dangling here, we're going to go for what I'm going to say halfway lift. And when I say halfway lift, I want you to bring your spine and find that length again. Remember how I was talking about the string pulling the top of your head up to the ceiling? Now the string is pulling the top of your head to the wall in front of you. So when I say halfway lift, this is forward fold, and then this is halfway lift. Now that we're halfway lifted, shift your weight into your right foot and bring it so that your left leg can take a step backwards. Try to do it as slowly and under control as you can. If you need to bend over more to make it happen, you're welcome to. Bring your arms overhead. Imagine like you're grabbing a big beach ball. And we're gonna take this beach ball and see how far we can reach it out in front. Our weight is square above this right foot, but I want you to remember to stay engaged in this back foot with these toes down here on the ground and feel the line of energy going from the back toes all the way through your hands. This is called the crescent lunge. This is a yoga pose that is very often done. Now from crescent lunge, we're gonna swing our arm up and behind us. Right toes are still facing forward. The fingers are facing forward as well. The beam of energy is shooting out. We're bending this leg nice and deep, trying to get our weight above this right thigh, but also staying engaged with this back foot. Your back foot should be angled like 45 degrees, while your right forward foot should be pointed forward. When you get these arms parallel, a toddler should be able to come by and swing from your arms. So stay nice and engaged. Feel the beam of energy shooting forward and shooting back. And this is called Warrior Two. From Warrior Two, we're gonna tick tock our arms down to where we're parallel with our arms and our shin bone here. If this is difficult, you're welcome to be on a block. You're welcome to be on a block or a book or down on the ground. If you're feeling like finding a little bit more of that core engagement and hips, you can bring the tip of your middle finger down just above your ankle. Bring your gaze point up to the ceiling and you'll start to feel this side angle pose really lighten your body up. You can also, if this is too difficult, you can place your elbow down here on your knee, but just try to stay engaged everywhere you can. And this is called side angle pose. Then we're gonna tick tock back to warrior two, which we remember. And then now we're gonna reverse our warrior. When we reverse our warrior, we're gonna bring our left hand back behind our back, sweep our right hand up into the air, push our hips forward towards this front foot. And don't forget to bring your gaze point up to the ceiling or that top hand if you can. So we reversed our warrior, we're going to swing down to triangle pose. Straighten this front leg as we tick tock down, sweep your arms nice and wide, and then this pose is called triangle pose because there's a bunch of triangles. Our knees are straight, don't walk out too much, but our, knee, our legs are straight, and we have a triangle here, a triangle here, and then a big triangle through our body. Now we're going to come back. To warrior two. And now this is where it gets fun. This is the front of our mat. We're just going to rotate. Rotate on our heels back the other way. So now our left leg is the front leg and we can shift our weight out in front of that left leg. Feel the line of energy coming back to our right foot. Shift our weight forward. Now we're going to reverse our warrior. Right hand behind the back, left arm up and over, leaning back, hips towards that front foot, side body stretch. 
then we're tick tocking down to side angle pose. That's where our knees by our elbow, if we needed that, if we want a little bit more engagement, we can bring our arms down. I'm able to completely remove my arm and stay solid. Takes time to get there. Swing back to warrior two. Reverse the warrior. Straighten that front leg. And we're gonna tick tock back down into triangle pose. That's the straight leg. Hands up to the ceiling. Don't forget to bring your viewpoint up to the ceiling. Then we're back to warrior two. Now that we're in warrior two, sweep our arms over. Oh wait. Uh, sweep our arms over. Our hands come down like this. And then we turn back into crescent lunge the original way that we were holding the beach ball. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody feeling that flow? Because now we're going to do another uh, round. Okay, so where were we? All right, crescent lunge forward. Then we are going to tick tock to warrior two. Warrior two to side angle. Back to warrior two. Reverse the warrior. Triangle pose. Back to warrior two. Pivot on those heels. Warrior two the other way. Reverse it. Side angle. Warrior two. Reverse it, and triangle pose. And then back to warrior two. I hope that was helpful for everybody. We've got the cues there. Now we've got the poses. Now in this round of movement, I'd really love for you guys to try really hard to focus on your breath. Sync your breath with your movements, inhales and exhales. And instead of cueing the names of the poses, this time I'm gonna kind of worry about cueing the breath. So try your best to follow along, but don't force it. This is your practice, do what feels good for you. Warrior two, inhale, reverse it. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse it. Triangle pose, warrior two, pivot on those heels, reverse it. Tick tock down to side angle, warrior two, reverse it, straighten the leg, triangle pose. And back to warrior two. This time we're gonna leave this little flow, bring our arms over to our, our hands down to our feet, and slowly walk ourselves over into a wide-legged forward fold. This is a nice place where you can start to feel your body again, whatever feels good for you. I like to do a little shoulder bind where I grab my hands behind my, my back and let my head drop down to the ground. Let my head drop down to the ground and open up those shoulders. Feel it in my hamstrings. Now we're gonna stand back up. Take those hands, walk them over towards your right foot. We're gonna have our right foot outside and both of our hands are underneath our body weight and our right foot is there and we're gonna drop that left knee down to the ground. This is called lizard pose and this starts to get pretty difficult 
Let's do this. Go back to uh, just where you can see me on the mat here. All right. So this is where we're at in lizard pose. We've got both of our hands down here inside of our leg. And we can, our left knee is down on the ground and our left shoelaces are down on the mat. And we can start to shift our weight forward. This is called lizard pose for obvious reasons. Lizards have those big crazy legs. You can shift your legs forward so that you can start to open up in the hips. Part of what eventually starts to happen is some yogis will even get their shoulder down underneath and start to lift this foot. Uh, but you don't need to mess with all that. Some yogis will even Take a little bind down in here, but you don't need to mess with all that. Just find whatever feels good for your body. Shift that weight forward. And if you're able to, now let's switch it back into a hamstring stretch. Shift our hips back down over that back heel. And maybe you come all the way down and it becomes a forward fold hamstring stretch like this. One more breath here. Exhale, walk our hands back forward. Bring back down to tabletop. We're gonna do the same stuff on the other side. So come back down to tabletop, wiggle those hips around a little bit. Shift that left foot up towards your hands and kick that lizard pose on the other side. See if you can Press those hips down to the ground. Here's the, some of those other fun variations for the more advanced yogi. You can start to come up like this. There's lots of things we can do. But I don't want to get you messed up with all that. Here's that bind. Really, just whatever feels good for you. I really don't want you doing all of those things. I just want you to see kind of how yoga can build off of itself. Rock backwards to the hamstring stretch. If you can, grab a hold of your foot. Or if you can't, you can just try to bring your forehead down towards your knee. Two more breaths here, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Walk our hands forward, back into tabletop position. For our last stretch of the practice today, this one is called Pigeon Pose. We're gonna take our right knee Bring it up towards our right wrist. Kick our right ankle over towards our left knee. This is where your body is going to need to get involved because everybody does everything different. I like to keep my ankle down here in my crotch, my knee forward, uh, as I bring my body down and go from pigeon down into sleeping pigeon. If this is tough on your knee, be very, very careful. Um, we're not wanting anything to hurt in a ligament. We're wanting things to be a nice stretch. So if there's any pain, just maybe skip this one. Um, try to find what feels good for you though. I've got my knee here, my ankle down towards my groin. If my knee feels loose, I can engage my ankle and it helps tighten up my tendons. And this is called pigeon pose. Feeling this back here in my glutes. And I'm gonna bring it down into sleeping pigeon. If you have a block, you can place a block down here on your forehead. But if you can, bring your forehead and chest all the way down to the mat. We're gonna have three breaths here. In through the nose, out through the mouth.
If you're enjoying this post, the progression for somebody that wanted to do a little bit more is right here. You can come up on your hands, bend this back knee, reach this left arm back, grab the ankle, get that nice proud chest. Straighten the leg, come back down, back up here to tabletop. I like to uh, rotate this hip around after a nice long pigeon like that. Act like a dog by a fire hydrant. Now let's do the other side. Left knee to left ankle. Left ankle to right knee. And then slowly rock ourselves back. I use my back foot to walk back my back toe so that I can bring my body and chest lower to the ground. Once again, I am a yoga teacher, so my bends may look very different than your bends, but this is your body and your yoga practice, and I'm just here to help you find a little guidance so you can shut your mind off, feel the flow, enjoy your Sunday, and hopefully it'll help you open up your body a little bit for the rest of the day. One more breath here. If you'd like to go for the progression, put your hands underneath your body weight, kick your right leg up, sweep the right arm back, palm towards the outside, chest forward. All right. Now for what I would say is the best part of yoga. This is Shavasana. Shavasana is the corpse pose and it's the time where we activate that parasympathetic nervous system and let our body relax. If you are done for the day and you're time crunched, I would invite you to please just try to take 30 seconds of Shavasana before you move on. I'm going to sit here for a couple minutes, um, and I hope that you enjoy, join me. Shavasana is just laying down. If you are needing a little bit of help from the universe, you can point your palms up into the air and be willing to accept its assistance. Or if you've been flying a little bit too high and you need to find some grounding, you can take your hands, flip them over, put your palms down. This is your time. So I'm gonna thank you once again for taking 45 minutes on a Sunday morning, and shutting the door on the rest of the world and opening the door to the inside. Let it, your heart, your mind communicate and be free. While you're here in Shavasana, check in with your body. Start down at the bottom. Check in with those toes. Moving up to the ankles. See how the ankles feel. In our mind, we're gonna move on to the calves. Now our knees. Slowly move your way from the bottom to the top. Check in with every part of your body. I'll let you do this on your own for a minute or two.
if you are enjoying your Shavasana, I'd like to encourage you to continue to enjoy it. Start your morning however you'd like. And if you are ready to wrap up Shavasana, you can join me in the seated pose. Sweep our arms wide over our head. Bring our hands together. Bring our hands down to our heart. In yoga, the phrase is uh, namaste or namaste. And the concept behind what that one word means is that uh, the light and the teacher in me recognizes and appreciates the light and the teacher in you. You can substitute student for that too. And the student in me recognizes and appreciates the student in you. But the whole idea of yoga is that when you allow for me to teach you today, that you teach me a little bit something about myself. And that we have a beautiful circular relationship here where we're each getting a little something out of this. And I really, really mean it today. You guys brought me a lot of joy. This was my first class. I see a, a handful of people still here with me. I love you all very much. I hope you have a really terrific Sunday and maybe we'll keep doing this since there was such a great response to it. Um, anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. Love you all. Be excellent to each other.